What's up, everybody? Welcome back. It's been two weeks. Uh, did you miss me? I don't know. Um, I don't know if it's been two weeks. I guess a little less than two weeks because I posted a video yesterday. That was an old video. Put it in the description. Uh, it was from 2015, uh, which is one of the sorties before I was actually diagnosed with kidney disease. But uh, I think it was a 1v0 that I just came back, did a city tour, did a touch and go. It was really uh, fun. So if you haven't seen that, check that out. Uh, I always love doing the New Orleans city tour, uh, which is just a lap around the city. Uh, it's my city, you know, New Orleans is home to me and it was always kind of a source of pride and just feeling awesome to be able to take a fighter and, and fly it over the Superdome and the French Quarter and, and all that stuff, then come back for the carrier break. Really good experience, a lot of fun. So, um, what has happened in the last two weeks? I know uh, a lot of you have reached out about Sniper and uh, his stuff. Um, if you've kept up with me on Instagram or Facebook or any of those places, I've kind of been get, feeding updates as we go. But here's the deal. Sniper is doing great. He is going home today, uh, probably by, about the time that this video will be uh, released. Uh, I just got the word that he is cleared to go home. He's doing great. Uh, long story short, I'll actually put it at the, at the end. So if you want to see what they removed uh, all the way at the end, because I don't want to gross people out, but you'll see it. But Basically, he had a tumor on his lung, and I think we caught it early. Now, granted, they're going to have to do a biopsy to tell what stage it was, but it was an isolated tumor, had not spread anywhere else. Lymph nodes are fine, no, no evidence of brain tumors or anything like that. They don't think it's spread anywhere else. They removed a lobe of his lung, and uh, they did that uh, two days ago. So he was supposed to go home yesterday, but they decided, well, he was having some trouble with pain management. So they kept him an extra night. And today he's going to go home. And uh, yeah, he's just on the road to recovery. It's about a two week process for him to recover, but every day he's going to get stronger. And he's just a strong, he is the embodiment of make them tell you no. I mean, he's just a tough dude. Uh, he, we can all learn from, from him. So Luna also, uh, God, everything piled up at once. Luna also had surgery yesterday. It was just for spaying, and yesterday was when it had already been scheduled well in advance of Sniper's uh, surgery. But uh, we got that done. She's also recovering, so we're going to have two patients in the house of Lemoyne uh, trying to get them both uh, up and running and on their feet and stuff. I think Luna is actually going to be the more difficult patient because she feels uh, great, and I think it's going to be tough to keep her from moving around and, and wanting to play and stuff like that because she's a puppy. She's cool. Uh, also, uh, the last couple of weeks, there's been, I'll make a video, uh, at some point about kind of the stuff that that's gone on and stuff, but every now and then you just hit, you know, the limit and, uh, it was good to take a break. It was good to take, a, uh, some time off and, uh, be a little introspective in, uh, kind of figuring some stuff out. So, um, going forward, there are still, there'll be videos again, you know, the channel's back. I don't know if it'll be daily. I don't know if it'll be. Every other day, I, I don't know, just whenever uh, good content comes up is when, when we'll upload and, you know, we'll just keep on trucking. Ironically, my views went up um, in the time that I was gone. So, you know, I had that slump that I talked about last time. In the two weeks, actually, the views went higher. So YouTube's a mysterious creature. But anyway, got to move her mailbag for you. Uh, looking at your... Uh, Stuff you sent me in the mail, plus a couple emails, and uh, we're back off to the races. Also, uh, since uh, the last video, the Fights on Indiegogo campaign has ended, I will do a dedicated video about that on Monday. Actually, we might do it live. I don't know yet. It'll either be live or it'll be a video, but I'll explain kind of what's going on, what the way forward is, and um, kind of how, how we'll handle that. So stay tuned for that video. Anyway, let's get to your mail. So the first one is really old. Um, I am super sorry. Uh, Renee, uh, you know, I know you reached out and we talked about this. I thought this was lost forever. I thought this one was just gone. And uh, Luna's behind me in case you're wondering. But um, it, it was found yesterday, actually. Um, I found it. Apparently it had been found by the post office a while back. And I brought it home not realizing what it was. And it sat 
forever. Uh, I guess somebody put it away and uh, I just found it yesterday. So my apologies. It's, it's my fault for not tracking it down sooner, but better late than never, right? So here we go. Uh, this is from Renee. All the way back in June. God. Oh, I feel so bad about that. But here we go. Here's here's Renee's thing. What do you think, baby girl? You think it's something for you? Well, that's a handwritten note. Hi, Mover. Renee from Wisconsin here. 65-year-old nurse, mama, grandma, Navy vet. No flying. I was a water jockey on a sub uh, tender in Norfolk. As a matter of fact, flying terrifies me, but I love to watch you do it. Love the sound of jets. The naval air side was close to my ship in port, and we could hear the fighters coming. They were nice enough to fly low for us. It's a great feeling, like fireworks. I'm fond of YouTube and found you by accident on an old Mover Ruins movies about the movie Flight. And I was hooked. You should have... Been on Top Gun, you should have been a Top Gun instructor. Tom Katz, watching you fly fascinates me. Making those decisions that fast is amazing. You and Gonky stand for all that is great in the military. Your channel reminds me of people, reminds people that freedom is not free. Uh, also folds of honor. This is a small token of thank you for all you do. Your wall looked a little bare. The items on the bottom are for the boys. My dog, Emma. Is also a rescue, and every time I bring Gracie bags or boxes in, she thinks something is for her. I wonder if Kaiser has heard, has heard anything. Luna is definitely here. Your new Hilo videos are making me crazy. I worry about you. It's the mama in me. I hope the watch party gets to happen. Stay safe. Thanks for all you do, Renee. Let's check out the, the awesome stuff. And I, I'm so sorry, Renee, that this took so long. For, for this. Let's see what this is. Oh, my other car is a plane. That is awesome. I'm going to need a bigger wall. Actually, I'm probably going to move offices, studios, if you will. Oh, this is cool. Altitude, air <laughs> Altitude airspeed brains. You need two of the three to survive. That's a true story. And now for the doggos. Luna! Possible replacement? I didn't even have Luna back then. It's crazy. Ah, ah, ah. Lulu Bell. Yep, she loves it. And here's the other one. Ah, ah. There you go, Von Ruff. And he loves it, too. Although she tries to take it from it. You should be resting, little girl. Awesome. Thank you so much, Renee. I am so sorry that it took this long to find this, but I'm glad, I'm glad we did. There it goes. All right. All right, this is from Kathy. And it is not for you, little girl. I don't think it's for you, little girl. Doesn't look like it might be. Whoa! <laughs> that is awesome! Look at that! Look at that! That is awesome. It's not for you, Kaiser, it's for me. It's badass. Thank you, Kathy. I got so much stuff for the wall now. Yeah, so I think my plan is I'm going to move out of this old office, convert my, you hear her in the background, convert my dining room, because no one uses dining rooms in 2021, uh, especially not single dudes, and make that a studio and do like a daily show. No, nah, not daily show. A show with more room. So let's take a look at your uh, emails, because I've marked some, and we'll do that. And you'll have now background music from Luna as we continue with this. All right, this comes from Mike. Hey, Mover, 
I've been watching your channel for a few months and I really enjoy Mover Ruins movies in the Mover Mailbag, which this is. Anyway, I started Spectre Rising on March 21st and just finished Finny Flight yesterday, April 28th. I also read the two Alex Shepard books during that time. It's been a long time since the series has hooked me like this. I just wanted to thank you for being such a great writer. By the way, I kept telling my wife as I was reading them that I was going to email you and tell you what a jerk you were because of all the twists and turns through the books. There were many days I'd read, I'd read a few pages and then close my Kindle with a sigh or a loud expletive, only to pick it back up again a minute or two later to continue on. I really do hope you have more coming and keep up the great work on the channel. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Uh, it means a lot, man. I, I appreciate uh, you know, the support of the writing because that's what started this whole thing. That's what started YouTube. That's what, you know, that's why I, 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 we are where we are right now. As for the next book, uh, it is in the, I'd say mid stages of editing. Uh, I just went through the first round to talk at the background. <laughs> oh, Luna Bell. Um, I would say it's in the mid stages of editing. Uh, so it's Shepard, uh, book three, which I think is going to be called No Justice. That's my working title. What do you think about that? And it'd be like N-O Justice, because it's New Orleans Justice, which is kind of a play from Absolute Vengeance to No Justice. Anyway, uh, that'll, that's kind of the working title. As soon as I get a cover, uh, I will be able to set that up for pre-order, and then probably a month later, it'll be live. So awesome. I uh, appreciate your support, and stand by for the next Shepard novel. And... When I'm done with that, that's probably when I'm going to start writing uh, the sequel to Finny Flight, because uh, I know I left that kind of a cliffhanger. But there's some stuff, some hints from Finny Flight in the next book. Next one comes from Mark, and there's a lot of words here. Hello, Mr. Lemoyne. Uh, thank you for taking the time to read my email. I've been watching your videos for a while now and find them inspiring. A little bit about myself. I was born and raised in Germany because my father is an American. Citizenship is no problem for me. I've always wanted to move to the U.S. permanently. My goal is to serve my country and be a pilot. Currently, I'm in my second semester at business school, but because there's no way for me to achieve my goals here, I am willing to transfer colleges. I would kindly ask you to help me with a few questions. To be an officer in the U.S. military, I need a four-year degree. True. Some was by... Uh, nah. Some websites specify that it needs to be from an accredited university, but not all of them do. What is the rule here? It has to be from an accredited university. I was born in Germany and served in the German Navy for a year. Could this be an obstacle when it comes to getting a security clearance? And if so, even for flying C-130, C-17s, etc. Any additional advice for my situation? Uh, what are the differences between the Air Force Reserve and Guard when it comes to training and day-to-day -day for the pilots? Best wishes for the future, and I hope the sniper makes a speedy recovery. Thank you for your help. P.S. If you need additional information to give advice, you can see my uh, resume and my school here. Uh, don't need your resume. Uh, it's pretty simple. Be honest. Your SF-86, which is a security clearance questionnaire, which I guess now is on eQuip, it'll have all the questions. You'll have to answer it. They will probably do a lengthy background investigation. Um, I'm not probably. They will do a lengthy background investigation. If you're honest, you're upfront, and you can answer their questions, yeah, you probably will have, have no problem. Um, most, if not all, fighters now require top secret clearance, so you have to be eligible for that. And, um, you know, I, I don't know, you know, I, it's been a while since I've done it. it it's not going to be a showstopper. It will be an inconvenience. Like, it's going to it's gonna be a process. There, it's not going to be a quick thing. Uh, they're going to investigate. They're going to make sure there's no foreign ties and all that stuff. But if you're honest, you give them everything they ask for, um, you know, you go through the process, I think you'll at least be able to, uh, you know, get that, that clearance. Um, it, it may... I, I don't know how it's going to affect, you know, flying other fighters, but uh, I think for sure you'll probably at least be able to, you know, fly something. But um, that is a good question. And I would just say be honest, fill everything out as best you can, give them all the information they ask for, and make them tell you no. That's it. I mean, just try and see what happens. Uh, as far as the differences between the Guard and Reserve, there are very few. Uh, the biggest difference is being the Guard is under Title 32, which is, I mean, for the most part, it's transparent. It just means it's more state mission versus uh, Reserve is Title 10. Um, the Guard gets more flying training periods, so you can actually make more money uh, as a part-timer. 
full time, it's the same thing. Uh, guard units also have uh, air defense missions for the fighter side, so they'll do alert and stuff like that. Uh, whereas reserve units don't typically do that, but otherwise, pretty much the same thing. I mean, it's it's just one's more state run, so they can get activated by the governor to do state missions like flood relief and and other stuff in house. I know uh, some Louisiana Air Guard pilots actually helped with flood. Uh, ops here when we had hurricanes like in Lake Charles and stuff like that. So it is slightly different, but for the most part, I mean, very similar. Uh, I think Air Force Reserve has more of an active duty mindset. So promotion's a little bit more difficult and some of the rules are a little bit more uh, stringent, but in general, it's pretty much the same day to day. Thanks for the question. Uh, let's see here. Last question. Uh, this comes from Jamie. There's a whole lot of stuff in the subject line, but he's got numbered questions. Or her. He or she. I don't know. Number one. Is there a diet that all military pilots have to follow or do they just eat whatever they want? The latter, given that they could still maintain weight standards. Yes. Beer and jalapeno popcorn. That's all you can eat. Ever. That's it. It's the whole diet. I'm just kidding. Uh, no. There's no special diet at all. Um, just be able to pass PT test. Two, have you seen any Asians flying in the military? I've watched dozens of drop night videos and I can only find less than 15 Asian. I don't know why we're so focused on race. Um, it, 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 that is a little frustrating, but, uh, have you seen my channel? I mean, Gonky's on here all the time and he's Asian. Um, Splint was Asian. I mean, yeah, don't focus on race though. There's no reason to. I mean, if, if you are qualified and if you are um you have the aptitude for it and you make them tell you no the race doesn't matter how do i convince my family to let me go to fly without causing a family drama my family doesn't like the idea of joining the military and they think that i should work in a more stable job doctor lawyer account uh i mean you're an adult you explain to them that's what you want to do and you go do it i mean you're serving your country. You're serving a higher purpose. If they don't understand that, that's on them. I mean, you, you can't let your family dictate your future as an adult. I mean, at, at that point, you know, you, you were making your own life choices. So, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it too much. I mean, yeah, they want you to be a doctor, lawyer, an accountant, but this is what you want to do. And they have to either respect that or, or not. I mean, there's, there, you, you can't convince people that are uh, closed-minded. You just can't. So focus internally. Be happy. Don't worry about trying to make other people happy. What is your take on INJEPT? How does INJEPT compare to traditional UPT? It used to be a guaranteed fighter slot. Now, I don't think it's much different than anything else. I think they get a few more hours in the T-38, but um, I think it's pretty much same, same. I mean, I don't think you get any difference... Uh, as far as quality of training or anything like that, you do get to hang out with international partners. So, uh, because that's the whole Euro NATO. So you get to fly with more international students. But when I was advanced, we flew with international students too. So, um, I, I don't, I don't think it, it, it helps or hurts you. I, I think it's just another place to go to pilot training these days. Uh, what non U S made fighter is your favorite? Hmm. I mean, the Euro fighter cool. You know, I think that's a cool looking airplane. Uh, Rafale's cool. I mean, I don't really have a favorite, but, you know, I think they're both really cool airplanes. Um, the Gripen, that's a cool looking jet as well. I mean, I'd, I'd fly anything. I'm very sorry about what happened to Sniper. May God bless him. I hope he's okay. Yeah, he's hopefully doing great. We'll bring him home this afternoon and uh, looking forward to a positive recovery. So thank you. Best regards, Jamie. Thank you for your question, Jamie. Uh, thank you, everyone, for just, I mean, being supportive, being here. Um, I'm happy to be back. I'm happy that, uh, you know, I was able to work through some stuff and have the support of my friends and family, uh, dogs, you guys, uh, and everybody. So I uh, expect more videos coming soon. Monday, we'll talk about Fights On. Uh, and what, what the path ahead is. And, and we'll talk, uh, you know, we'll get more interviews. We'll do some more DCS videos. I've got to do a review. Um, this company sent me this, uh, I, I don't want to call it a cockpit, but it's like a lawn chair with 
you put a stick on it and um, we'll review that. That'll be interesting. And um, yeah, more content, more Mover Ruins movies. And, uh, you know, we'll just keep on keeping on. I appreciate everybody. So if you want to send me something, uh, P.O. Box 8594, Mandeville, Louisiana, 70470. Uh, or you can, if you want something to be read on the Mover Mailbag, uh, Mover Mailbag at CWLemoyne.com. Or if you want to just send me something, CWLemoyne at CWLemoyne.com if you don't want it uh, on the mailbag itself. But I um, hope you guys have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you.